In New Orleans, it's time for more basketball. It is quarterfinal Friday of the 2012 SEC Tournament. And the house is full. The Big Blue Nation here to watch the number one team in the country. SEC Tournament presented by Haviland. And it is quarterfinal Friday, and it's LSU taking on the top seed, and not only the top seed, the number one team in the country, the Wildcats of Kentucky. Welcome back inside New Orleans Arena, everybody. Brad Nessler along with Jimmy Dykes. Partner, with all due respect to LSU, Alabama, Ole Miss, and Georgia, who all had to work yesterday to just get here. I think everybody in the building knows now it's time for the SEC tournament because Kentucky's involved. <laughs> it has officially begun, has right. it not, according to the Big Blue Nation. Total domination by Kentucky in the regular season. They win the SEC regular season by a plus six game margin, plus 16 points a game, and there's no reason right now to let off the accelerator. Kentucky has proven to be the best team in all of college basketball in the regular season. Now the journey begins to prove they're the best season, uh, the best overall in college ball. Well, about 15 minutes ago, they got the SEC regular season championship trophy for Mike's Live, and now they're going to try to add the tournament title to it. Let's take a look at our one-on-one -on -one presented by Haviland. Well, for LSU, the three bigs, they must play big. You have to have size around the rim to hang with Kentucky. LSU has that size they must produce today. For Kentucky, go ahead and pursue 19-0 against teams in the SEC. You're 16-0 right now. The goal is to get back to New Orleans in a couple of weeks. 19-0 sets you up well. Here's the starting lineups for LSU. A winner over Arkansas yesterday. Hickey, Stringer, and Turner in the backcourt. Storm Warren and Justin Hamilton up front. And for the Wildcats of Kentucky, here's how it looks. The youngsters, Teague and Lamb, Kid Gilchrist, the freshman, Terrence Jones, just a sophomore, and Anthony Davis, the player of the year in the SEC, the freshman of the year in the SEC, the defensive player of the year in the SEC. Mike Nance, Pat Adams, Antonio Petty, our officials. Here we go. This is the 53rd SEC tournament. Kentucky has won over half of them with 27 titles. Lob underneath, one big guy to the other. Terrence Jones with a one-hander. A physical play by Terrence Jones to start the ball game, and that is his number one role for John Calipari going forward. LSU again, a winner over Arkansas yesterday to get to this battle. Off the window, good. Storm Warren, who had a good game yesterday and a good start today. I love where LSU goes to the basketball, Brad. Inside is where they can hold up in this ball game. And a walk on Terrence Jones. First turnover of the ball game as we take a look at the principal financial group edge of the game. Well, for LSU, you have to be the most physical team at that four and five spot to match up with the size of Kentucky. Be in this ball game late in the, the four minutes to go. And for Kentucky, Brad, you have to control Anthony Hickey. And you also have to make LSU guards defend. They're small. Hickey 5'11", Stringer 5'9", John Calipari can invert his offense, make those small guards defend today. Hamilton's going to go to the free throw line. A foul on Anthony Davis. That's something you have to watch. Anthony Davis has been good about staying out of foul troubles. Only fouled out once this year. Had a little foul trouble in their only loss against Indiana. But... Uh, Everybody thinks that that's the recipe. If you can get him in foul trouble or he and Terrence Jones in foul trouble at the same time, well, they've survived all that. And Hamilton has both free throws. 77% free throw shooter and missed two, which would have given LSU an early lead here. Teague penetrates, dishes underneath to Jones, and he scores again. Another strength basket by Terrence Jones, and what a terrific find by Marcus Teague. A better assist to turnover ratio than Brian, Brandon Knight or John Wall. And that's Hick saying something. Hickey hung up a three, and then Kentucky threw it away. The ball goes right to the coach, and he fires it on the floor on the bounce. Second turnover by the Cats. And that's a determined drive by Marcus Teague. And Terrence Jones again, Brad, this is not an overly physical ball club around the rim, Kentucky, but Terrence Jones is that guy that can hold up in a push-and-shove match. Jimmy, he totally dominated a regular season matchup at 27 points, so he's off to that kind of start again today. Hamilton in the low block will have to bring it back out. Long three by Stringer. He and Hickey have both taken a couple of bombs and just died on the rim. Brad, because they're 5'10", 5 5'11", 5 and Kentucky is so long on the perimeter, LSU, if they're going to make threes, they're going to have to make a couple of those long bombs, as yep. you described. Marcus Teague running the show at the point. and seems to be getting better every week in that point guard 
that position for the Wildcats. Kid Gilchrist had it slapped out of his hands. I heard a lot of ball, but they're going to call a foul. And it'll be on uh, Storm Warren. John Calipari, Coach of the Year in the SEC. Nice to see that John got that honor. Maybe should be the National Coach of the Year. We've talked about it so many times. He has such talented teams. Sometimes he's overlooked on how a good coach he is. And he's told us many times, I just don't roll the ball out there, guys. We go to all his practices. We know how hard he works at it. Uh, he's a terrific game manager. His X's and O's is the prelude to how he wants to attack people is always spot on. He gets my vote for National Coach of the Year. Bill Self has been terrific. Frank Hape has been terrific. But John Calipari, for what he's done to blend guys to play consistent with the fifth youngest team in college ball this year is off the charts. Hamilton Jones on him and he's going to drive in the paint with a left hand hook and rejected by Davis comes free out to Turner and he missed the jumper boy just when you think you've got a good look in the lane all of a sudden those long arms come out of nowhere three pointer on go for Lamb and Stringer comes up with a loose ball rebound He's weaving his way through traffic, and he's going to get it stuffed on him. That, that will not work against Kentucky. They sprint, they get their defense set, and their link will absolutely swallow you up. And Anthony Davis, Brad, if you don't move him away from the rim, if you're LSU in this ballgame and allow him to camp out, you're going to see this happen time and time and time again. Davis on the outside. His offensive game has been really improving over the past month as well. Jones, and he's rejected by Hamilton. And a push and a foul. It'll be called on Terrence Jones. Kentucky can have off nights offensively and still win ball games. The nation's best defense is on this floor right now. 36% is what they have allowed on the season. Nice pick and roll. Hamilton goes against both big guys, and Davis got another one. Brad, you can't one hand finish against Kentucky. You have to go with two hands on that basketball and at least get yourself to the foul strike. Not even four minutes into the game, and a couple of block shots are ready for Davis, and he comes up with a loose ball on Jones' miss. Battle for the extra rebound. Kid Gilchrist wins up. And the fans react to the Cats' hustle. Jones against Hamilton, backing in. Drew a double team. Lamb and now Teague on the baseline and knocked out of bounds. Still Kentucky ball. Hamilton is a seven-footer. I love his aggressiveness with the basketball, but watch at the end of the play. One hand on the ball is what he's going up with, and that will not work against the size and the quickness of Kentucky around the rim. Eight on the shot clock. Teague's got to get rid of it. Finally finds Davis down low, and he's fouled. Boy, with one second remaining on the shot clock, Teague found Davis, and he'll be going to the free throw line after the break. So far, we get a little bit of a block party going on in New Orleans, led by who else? Anthony Davis. Welcome back. Championship week presented by Dick Sporting Goods. Quarterfinal Friday here in New Orleans. Over four minutes into the game. Kentucky leading 5-2 to two and already a couple of block shots for Anthony Davis. Brad, for the 16th time this season, Anthony Davis blocks one of the first three shot attempts by the opponent. He immediately gets himself into the ball game on the defensive end of the floor. Look what this young fella has done as an individual. And look at what he is doing as with 148 now blocks on the season. He has more block shots than all those teams that are currently ranked in the top 15 in the country. It's amazing. And he's added to his offensive repertoire over the course of the last month or so. And that's why when you start talking about player of the year in the nation, this kid's name is mentioned prominently. 
I think he and Thomas Robinson will split those National Player of the Year awards because there's multiple ones given out, which Common Sense Index tells me we need to get that one like the Heisman in football yep. that says this is the guy. But for my vote, Anthony Davis impacts the game more than Thomas Robinson for 40 minutes on both ends. Yeah, right now, he's on both the Wooden and the Naismith lists, which are the two biggest awards, though there are other ones that Jimmy talked about. Michael Kid Gilchrist on that Wooden final 15 as well. Hamilton missed from the outside, but the guy that had a big game yesterday, making his first appearance on the floor, Johnny O'Brien, keeps it alive. Just had a super game yesterday, Johnny did. Got to the free throw strike 17 times, just dominated the offensive glass. That's one of their better play calls, is getting the ball on the rim and letting two in purple go get it. Yep. At 18 and 11 yesterday for his double-double. Here's Hickey, kick out Hamilton, baseline, and that shot was altered because Davis got in his way. Here's T. All the way, and Hamilton gets that one. That's his second block shot for the big guy, and he pulls it down. Nice job defensively. But don't Davis. think Anthony Davis can't block three-point shots either. We've seen him do it ten times this year. And LSU turns it over. See how Kentucky didn't panic when Anthony Davis was matched up with a 5-9 point guard to begin right. that series. Now Hickey, can he win the race to the basket? He did, just in front of T. If LSU can score points off of their defense, it is a huge bonus. They don't have enough offensive firepower to win a high-scoring game out of their half court. And now Hickey with a steal on Davis. Better hustle. He got there first. Back-to-back -back baskets by Anthony Hickey, and he's given LSU a 6-6 tie here. And a timeout taken by Kentucky. That's the, that, that's the guy that Kentucky has to keep control of. I mean, he is from the state of Kentucky. Kentucky, Mr. Basketball, so you know he comes with a sense of urgency in this ball game. Kentucky has gotten loose with the ball a couple of times early, and John Calipari will address it during this timeout. But Hickey's a kid that has a ton of competitive fire about him, a lot of courage. You have to contain him today and control him if you're Kentucky. Member of the SEC All-Freshman Team, 5'11 freshman out of Hopkinsville, as Jimmy said, last year's Kentucky, Mr. Basketball. So LSU hit their first shot, then they missed their next six, but now after a couple block shots by Hamilton, a couple of turnovers and back-to-back -back baskets by that guy, we're tied at six. Don't see Kentucky call that many timeouts five minutes into the game because they're not playing well enough. <laughs> Calipari has his power lineup on the floor now, and Wiltshire at that four spot to pick and pop. And that's what they will go to. There's the screen. There's the pop. They didn't give him any room to shoot. And now he's fouled on his way to the basket. Right, he's a hard guard, Wiltshire is. And his ability to knock down three-point shots the last three or four ball games, a real spark to this Kentucky offense, but he can move that defensive four men around awfully well. Good three-point shooter. On the inbounds, Teague gets it to Davis, and right back to Teague. Fade away over O'Brien. Way strong, and the rebound belongs to Turner. He had a better shot on the initial touch. Yeah, he he kind of dribbled himself into a tougher shot. Kentucky shot off two for two. They've missed their last six shots, much like LSU did in the early going. O'Brien, freshman against freshman here. Double team now. Darius Miller trying to strip him of the ball. And he got rid of it. Stringer buries a three. What a great job by O'Brien. I mean, Kentucky double teamed him as soon as the ball went on the floor. Kentucky came with a monster on O'Brien. And his composure and his ability to step through low as a big kid, well done. John Calipari wanted a three-second violation in the lane or a five-second call on the double team. Instead, a three-pointer by Stringer has given LSU its first lead. Eight on the shot clock. Teague with Hickey right on him, but he dribbles through traffic and... Blocking foul underneath. That was close. 
That's two fouls on Ralston Turner. Well, Pat Adams did not point at the restricted area. And he's right on top of it. The sneakers were outside of it, but the defender not quite set when Teague left the floor. So Marcus goes to the free throw line. That's his first point. And his improvement again. Something that is so special about John Calipari's ability to bring point guards along. And I mentioned it. This kid has a two to one assist to turnover ratio in conference play. Wall had it 1.3 to one. Knight 1.4 to one. He is better taking care of the basketball. Dick Gilchrist got the rebound off the missed free throw, but then threw it away. Another Kentucky turnover. O'Brien, and again, had to take it over the long arms of Davis, and it was not a good looking jump shot. And the foul is going to be uh, Wiltshire. That LSU cannot take quick shots when Kentucky has their defense set. They have to turn this thing into a grind game. The size of Warren and O'Brien and Hamilton have to be a major factor for Trent Johnson. Stringer running around a pick on the baseline. I got a wide open look. Returner got it. The three. Austin Turner buries the three. And a five-point LSU lead. A little bit of a surprise here in the early going of quarterfinal Friday. Jones had a couple of baskets early. The only field goal so far for Kentucky. Almost eight minutes into the game, Jimmy, they got two field goals. T all the way through traffic, rejected by score more. And the ball has been in Marcus Teague's hands too much in this game so far. Dickey on a runner. Missed the shot. It'll be out of bounds to Kentucky. 11.56 remaining in the first half. How about this? LSU. Andre Stringer and company leading 12-7. Jack Doss way up there on top. SEC tournament presented by Haviland. Part of Championship Week presented by Dick Sporting Goods. LSU, an early surprise here, 12-7. Kentucky, they've gone seven minutes without a field goal and have missed their last seven shots. Five turnovers mixed in there. That's not normal Kentucky basketball. I would expect this basketball on this possession for Cal's guys to get multiple touches. I mentioned that Marcus Teague has done a lot of dribbling and surveying so far in this ball game in the half-court offense. And that ball now needs to start moving. Terrence Jones got the early two touches and the early two field goals. That's it, other than the free throws. Kid Gilchrist in the paint. And his hook goes. Yeah, well done. They get the ball out of Teague's hands and run a little flex cut on the baseline, coming out of the timeout. John Calipari goes to his power game. Stringer almost had it stripped. Bass in the lineup. Three small guards right now out there for LSU. Hamilton trying to set a screen. Bass doesn't use that. Hickey pull up three over Kid Gilchrist. Rimmed out. And Davis the rebound. Kid Gilchrist, same spot. Same result. Grab some mismatch. Bass is a six foot guard on Kid Gilchrist. Kentucky has size at all five spots right now. John Calipari so good at finding the mismatch. Making you pay. Hamilton thought about a shot and thought better of it. And he had Davis right in his grill. We're in the lane, gonna be a foul on Deron Lamb. That is a simple flex cut action that Kentucky's using right now. This is the size advantage. Just gonna come off of here, a little duck move. John Calipari, you're gonna see Terrence Jones. Bam! There's the screen. There's Kid Gilchrist spreading out like a buffet, and it is <laughs> over at that point. 6'7 and 240 is too hard for 6 foot and 150, 160 to handle. He's a buffet and he's quality food. Absolutely. <laughs> That's the problem you have with Kentucky and their size. Hamilton, see what he does against Davis. Baseline hook, a little bit short. Davis snatches it down. 
Hamilton might got poked in the eye as well on that shot. Because Davis plays behind defensively as a shot blocker, Brad, he's always in position for defensive rebounds. Right just now, keep Hamilton, going to it. Hamilton playing with his right eye shut. Kid Gilchrist I thought he was tied up that time, but they're going to call a foul. Jimmy, you talk about Davis officially only given two block shots, but look at a couple of shots earlier. Here's Hamilton on the baseline. Watch this one. This isn't even close. And now watch Johnny O'Brien also with Davis, and that one's not close. And what the, the point being, earlier in the season, he got in people's way. As he became more and more prominent as a shot blocker, he's gotten in people's heads now. Yeah, I, I think you're dead on. And this is a guy that you know, you feel his presence, Brad, when you're on the floor. You always know where Anthony Davis is as a potential shot blocker. He has blocked 146 coming in this ball game. 94 of those were jump shots. Think about that. How well he moves around the floor as a position defender to be in position to block jump shots. And look at the single season marks. Obviously, he's the Kentucky single season record holder far and away. 148 with the two he's blocked so far here in the first half. The boy, he's altered as many shots as he's blocked, probably twice as many. And Hamilton was indeed playing with his right eye closed because of a contact lens problem. So they've given him a break enough to get some contact solution over there and get it back where it belongs. And Kid Gilchrist to go to the free throw line to try to tie the game. We had three possessions in a row. Michael Kid Gilchrist has had a smaller defender on him. John Calipari pulls the trigger for 14 in white and runs the flex cut. Tell you what, the LSU fans, if somebody would have said we're going to be either tied or a one-point difference with Kentucky midway through the first half, they'd take it. Kentucky back in front by one. They have time to get in the car and drive here and be here for the second half. <laughs> we're, we're concerned. Where are the LSU fans when we're this close to Baton Rouge? That's exactly right. There's a little bit of purple and gold in here, but it's mostly blue. Hamilton, again, the fake. Now he goes too strong again. He just rattled it off the board. He's losing his finesse out of his hook shot because it's in his mind at 23 is there somewhere. I think he will come out and Kent Johnson will get it in his ear and settle him down. And that's the substitution you're going to see. You have to go at Anthony Davis, but you also have to understand this is a well-built Kentucky defensive team. It's not just one-on-one. -on -one. You know, earlier you said on that drive, he's got to go stronger than that. And that's in his mind, but you can't go stronger on a hook shot. You're just going to rattle it off the window. <laughs> he's a heck of a player now. Yeah, he is. He has produced big numbers in this game, but the seven-footer right now is no match for Anthony Davis. Let's see if LSU can get their offensive mojo back. As they had a nice streak there where they ran out to a five-point lead, and now they've gone stagnant a little bit. Very low-scoring game here with 9.40 to go first half. Open look for Warren. Rebound, Johnny O'Brien underneath. Nice positioning by O'Brien. Deron Lamb right now playing the point with Teague on the bench. Just a high pick from Wiltshire. And now Darius Miller throws it away. Wiltshire heading one way, the pass going the other. That's six Kentucky turnovers in the first half. They only had six the whole game when they beat LSU six weeks ago. That dribble handoff between Wiltshire and Miller occurred too high on the floor. Therefore, when Miller got the basketball, it was a bad angle back into Wiltshire trying to post up. Officially now, Kentucky got seven turnovers. The LSU does likewise. Um, traveling call on Johnny O'Brien. So Kentucky's already had one more turnover in 11 minutes than they had in 40 at Baton Rouge, January 28th. And it'll be a foul on LSU as. Kid Gilchrist again on the drive. Isaac picks up the foul. Brad, too many coaches across the country, when they when they have something going for them, they don't stay with them. Not John Calipari. I mean, he's going to ride Michael or Kid Gilchrist right now as long as he can. Oh, there he is. Oh, missed a slam, but he's going to go back to the free throw line. I mean, why not? LSU cannot handle this guy. 
off of flex cuts, off of out-of-bounds plays, throwing it up around the rim. Too much. And in the meantime, they're getting themselves in foul trouble because Turner's got two, Warren's got two, and John Isaac, who came off the bench, has got two. So Hamilton, who doesn't have any, going to come back in there. This is going to alter Trent Johnson's lineup considerably, I think, right here. In fact, Eddie Ludwig in the lineup a lot quicker than he expected to be, I'm sure. This kid, as Jimmy has said, and we've said every time we've done Kentucky, such a matchup problem. He's so strong. He's 230, maybe 235 pounds. He's six feet seven. He's hit his last four free throws. And Kentucky back in front by one. Kid Gilchrist for the last eight points for Kentucky. Out of that timeout, John Calipari went to him. He will continue to go to him. Ludwig got a hand on it. Came free to Hickey. Ball fake and a drive and a nice one yeah, by he, Anthony Hickey. Wasn't that a great ball fake? Yeah. Just enough to get that rim set defender to lean one way in the blow box. He's going to be a heck of a player before his time is done at LSU. Not the biggest guy in the world, but here he is on the steal. And the layup. Wow, that's the second time he's done that. Took one away from Davis. He took that one away from Teague. And LSU by three again. Turnovers are careless or selfish. And the turnovers for Kentucky so far have been of the careless variety. Darren Johnson just looked at Marcus Teague and said, give me the ball. <laughs> Those two are jawing out there right now. The freshman and a sophomore. And the sophomore is letting the freshman know what he wants. They haven't started their offense, and there's 11 ticks to go on the shot clock. Now they get it into Jones. Wheels and misses. He got his own miss. He looks to John Calipari. Back pedals on the dribble. And let's see if they get into the offense quicker. They're trying to. Teague's going to take it himself. Davis. Trying to tip it to himself and a foul on Davis. And that's two on Anthony Davis. Something to keep an eye on. 7.08 remaining in the first half. Shannon Spank, third member of our team, talks with John Calipari when we come back. Here's on top of the Wildcats by three. 7.08 remaining in the first half. Shannon talked with John Calipari during the timeout. Eight turnovers so far. What are you saying to your team about those? Being physical, getting sand kicked in our face. And if it continues, it'll it's going to continue like this. You got to play people before they catch the ball. You got to be prepared to catch the ball before you catch it. Got to be strong with the ball. We're not doing any of it. So they deserve to be in the position they're in, the, the LSU, that is. Negating physical play, do you see that in any area for your team right now? Well, they're just, they're being, they want it more, and they're playing harder. And that's why the score is what it is. Well, the eight turnovers Shannon and Cal talked about has turned into eight points, four made field goals. And some of that has been Anthony Hickey, because he just got three steals in the first 13 minutes. Six pass break points for the little guy, a former Kentucky Mr. Basketball, and he is playing against Kentucky. LSU has a lot of postseason passion in this building right now, playing with a greater urgency than Kentucky is. We talked about in the open, you have to be more physical than Kentucky at the four and five spots. Anthony Davis with four turnovers, Terrence Jones with two. LSU has been the more physical team at those two spots so far. Hickey backpedals and takes one over Kid Gilchrist. Johnny O'Brien in the right spot for the rebound. Underneath, no foul call. He's looking for one. Here come the Cats, three on two. Kid Gilchrist, Lamb on the other side. And timeout LSU. Trent Johnson did not like the fact that there wasn't a foul called on Johnny O'Brien on the other end. Kentucky's so good at running off of their defense. They fill the lanes. That's the right pass by Teague to start with to see what are you going to do defensively. You're going to go to the right side with the ball. I know I got a guy on the left. Well done. Take a look at our ceasefire conference call. The bracket looks like this. Kentucky and LSU in game one. Florida and Alabama a little bit later on this afternoon. Tonight, Tennessee and Ole Miss. And then Vanderbilt and Georgia. Georgia with a win over Mississippi State last night. And that might make Mississippi State a little rocky as far as the NCAA is concerned. Well, according to Joe Lenardi, they have now slid to the last four in. I look at Mississippi State, though, with wins 
over Arizona, West Virginia, Detroit, the winners out of the horizon, Tennessee, Alabama, at Vanderbilt. Mississippi State has a lot better wins than a lot of teams like in the Pac-12 right now. I still think they're okay. Bad news is they've lost six of their last eight games. Yep. One point LSU lead. Stringer, not afraid to shoot. He might have gotten fouled by Kid Gilchrist, but they didn't call it. He missed the three. Terrence Jones out of the pile with it. Lamb, three. Got it. You don't want to get him warmed up. Or the crowd, for that matter. O'Brien, too strong over Jones. Hamilton found it, but missed it, and it'll go to the free throw line. That's how LSU can stay in this ball game now, pounding the boards. I love the patience of Marcus Teague to find Deron Lamb and let Lamb step into his shot. Had he rushed the pass, Deron Lamb would have been out of rhythm. He held on the ball about a half count later and allowed, allowed Deron Lamb to step right into his shot motion. See if Justin Hamilton can get in the groove from the free throw line. After missing his first two, he does. I think a bench warning to either John Calipari or somebody over there. And Pat Adams just issued that. Hamilton trying to tie the game from the free throw line. Does. 2020, 535 on that in first half. Jones working against Bryant, wants the ball and gets it. Goes through a lot of purple to draw the foul. And the on O'Brien. Terrence Jones got his hips lower than O'Brien. Just like you teach a guard. Watch Terrence Jones drop his hip. Boom, right there. His hips were lower than the defender. Advantage, three and white. That's two fouls on Johnny O'Brien, too. So four guys on LSU's team with two fouls. Kentucky's worst free throw shooter, Terrence Jones, are at 66%. As a team, they're tops in the conference at 72 plus. And that's going to sit O'Brien. Because right now, Trent Johnson's playing musical chairs over there with his bench, trying to keep everybody from getting a third foul in yeah. the next five minutes. And Jones missed them both, but it came right back to him. And you can't let that happen if you're LSU trying to take down the nation's best team. Such a terrible free throw that it came all the way yep. back where it started. <laughs> you have to have a guy assigned to that free throw shooter and yep. get into his legs. Right now, Lamb and Stringer kind of tied up together. Stringer picks up the foul. Kentucky in the one and one now for the next five minutes. And the guy going to the free throw lines, one of the best in the business, second in the conference from the strike, Deron Lamb. Kentucky 7 out of 12 so far from the free throw line. The first game this year against LSU, 15 of 26 for the game. And right now, Andre Stringer on our near side is closest to Deron Lamb. He has to step in and check Lamb on the free throw attempt because on the other side of the floor, you've got Terrence Jones, who is the best offensive rebounder on the floor, so you can't cheat off of him. Those two guys should pinch Jones. Stringer should go get Lamb. Seven points, they're on Lamb. Two-point lead, Kentucky. A lot of play calls by LSU. They're running the reverse action right now. Trying to keep this game on path to be played in the 50s. Hamilton, Can they do it? Excuse me, Jimmy Hamilton banging away with Jones down there, asking for the ball. At least he doesn't have Davis on his back hip. See what he does with it. 
Better job that time, but still no go. Rebound land. Teague on the run. There is Miller, pull up jumper. Here comes Hickey. Weaves through traffic, uses his body beautifully, but he didn't score. And look out. Head first dive into row one by Michael Kidd Gilchrist. And you, and you hope he's okay. I know if you were sitting down there, you would say, are you okay, Michael Kidd Gilchrist? <laughs> and then secondly, you check on the guy that right. he ran over yeah, from exactly. our past experience. I don't know if that computer's going to be as in good a shape as it was. <laughs> but great hustle by Michael. LSU down by two. They've led by as many as five. Hamilton turns and hits the jump shot. That might be his best bet. Just a drop step and fire it up instead of driving to the basket. Tied at 22. Now that three-inch height advantage he has over Jones. He has a high release. Pence Jones needs to play wider with his hands as an inside defender. Wider and higher. You're just tuning in. Surprise, surprise, huh? Number one team in the country playing a team that had to battle through yesterday just to get here. LSU and Kentucky tied at 22. Seven on the shot clock for T. Jones drives up and under, missed the shot. Hamilton the rebound. I just don't like Kentucky's offense when the ball is stuck in the hands of Teague so far in this game. Warren in some traffic, and he's going to be fouled by Darius Miller. And he'll be shooting free throws when we return. And Trent Johnson will be talking with Shannon Spake when we return. 22-22 in New Orleans. 22-22. Coming up on the Ceasefire Halftime Report, Dar Barry and Joe will be talking about their impression of the first half of this game. Anthony Davis impact, Florida, Alabama preview, and a lot more. Stick around for halftime. Shannon talked with Trent Johnson during the timeout. Coach, tied game right now. Your thoughts on your team's effort in this first half? Well, our effort, our intensity is really, really good, but we got to do a better job once the ball's thrown to post. We got to start finishing some plays. Obviously, they're very talented, they're very good defensively, but we're missing out on a lot of opportunities in the post right now. You had 10 turnovers in the first half yesterday, just two right now. What's been the biggest difference for you guys? Well, different type of pressure. We're doing a very good job of taking care of the ball. Thanks, Coach. Missed opportunities in the paint, indeed, Jimmy, as you take a look at the big guys for LSU and their numbers so far. And they have left some out there, obviously, between Justin Hamilton and Johnny O'Brien. Well, and that is tied to the impact of Anthony Davis as a defender. And those are the two guys that can keep LSU in this ball game. Eleven times already, LSU has gone to a design play to get that ball in the paint. But it's only produced seven points so far. And that's what Trent was telling Shannon. We've got to make sure when we get rim shots, that thing's going through the net. Warren knocks down the free throw. You saw 28 points between Hamilton and O'Brien yesterday in the 70-54 win over Arkansas. Storm Warren, three points. Now four to give LSU the lead again. And he comes out. And Malcolm White comes in. His first appearance in this 2012 SEC tournament. Another big body. Now, ever since Eddie Ludwig checked in for LSU, Kentucky has not gone to Michael Kidd Gilchrist. And I think they still have the advantage at that spot. Ludwig at least has some size. Kidd Gilchrist outside over Ludwig. Mr. Three. And White with a rebound. That's the only thing he doesn't do. Michael Kidd Gilchrist is make threes. And he's only made 12 all year. Made one since January the 14th. And he is a power player that needs to stay six, eight feet around that rim in this game. Well, Malcolm White's in the scorebook now as setting a pick against Deron Lamb picks up the foul. First half. Now, there it is again. And that's what I was calling for. Just go right back to it. Missed the shot this time, though. Now, same exact shot, just not on target. Well, Hamilton can work now on Wiltshire. 
Ludwig's going to take the outside jumper. And Terrence Jones with the long rebound. Fans are getting a little bit anxious. Looking for some Wildcat offense. Terrence Jones would have cranked that three up a year ago. He attempted 79 three-point shots, only 34 this year. His discipline out there is so much better. And on cue. <laughs> Kid Gilchrist, he doesn't get it. And he's got his own rebound. He's fouled by Hamilton. That's Hamilton's first. Storm Moore and the veteran, the senior, is going to check back in here shortly. But now it's back to the free throw line for Michael Kid Gilchrist. Five out of six for Michael from the stripe so far. He has been big in Kentucky's biggest games this year. Double-double versus North Carolina, 24 and 19 against Louisville. A double-double at Tennessee, a double-double at Mississippi State. Likes the bright lights. Yeah, he has a gear and <laughs> a kind of like you. He has a gear, <laughs> but he has a gear and a toughest level about him that is so unique for a young player. After five straight makes from the free throw line, he missed that one and missed the opportunity to tie the game back up. LSU by one. If you're thinking as Kentucky had only 23 points at this stage of the year ever, their season low at halftime is 27. We'll see if they get there. Warren. Oh, was that rejected by Terrence Jones? That's a block shot there. He blocked the entire ball, body, and everything else. And, and Brad, if you're Storm Warren, you have to quickly erase it. You know playing against Kentucky, that's going to happen to you some. But you do not get discouraged, and you continue to pound that thing around the rim. That's the chance you have to win this game. Tigers now have to be aware that there's only 12 seconds on the shot clock. Kentucky with five blocks. They lead the conference nine a game. So they're well on that pace. Brad, if you're not careful, Kentucky can hurt your feelings when they block your shot. Exactly. But you can't let that happen. So you have to be mentally tough enough to just get right on to the next play. And the next play has eight seconds to develop. Stringer against Kid Gilchrist. Got it up to the rim at least. Got his own miss. Fresh 35. Hickey's not going to wait, though. Jump shot rims out. Kid Gilchrist snatches it down. Here come the Wildcats with a minute to go in the first half. Yeah, he didn't wait, but he should have waited. Because they had 33 on that shot clock, and they could have taken this thing down to 30, 40 seconds to close out the half. Kentucky's got a chance to get two for one. Lamb. Got it. All right, that's what's going to have. Kentucky is now going to get this ball back to in the half. And you're trying to take down the nation's best team. All those small plays you have to be on top of. Will Kentucky have the lead going into halftime off of a quick shot by LSU with over a minute to go? Warren jumper, a little too strong for Gilchrist again to snatch down that rebound. And now Kentucky's got a chance to at least match or surpass their season low at halftime. They got a one-point lead. Teague lost the ball though. And Ludwig comes down with it. Hickey was ready to break out and try to get a layup. They didn't get the ball to him. Now they do. With four to shoot. Hickey. Straight up. Didn't get it. Kentucky by one at the break. Good game, though. Tough, tough LSU team that had to play yesterday. A fresh Kentucky team not looking that fresh right now. Number one team in the country. Their season low at halftime. 25 points. 25-24, our halftime score. Dari, Barry, and Joe standing by with a ceasefire halftime report. Beat the Dickens out of LSU about six weeks ago in Baton Rouge. So let's see if the second half goes the same as the first. There's the difference that six weeks can make. But I know number 23's day is not done yet. Six rebounds. He did lead both teams in that category. Here we go. Can you get a quick third foul on Anthony Davis? We got a quick foul on the baseline on Deron Lamb. Anthony Davis has fouled out one time way back in November. He has been so good at keeping his body off of people. Continues to block shots at a 
two to one ratio in terms of his fouling to shot block percentage. He pulls down his seventh rebound on the miss by Storm Warren. Kid Gilchrist was a big factor in the first half with 10 points to lead everybody. He's got 12 now and a chance to make it 13. That is the one guy that LSU does not have an answer for. The two small guards are holding up against Kentucky's one and two position, but it's that three spot that Kentucky has the advantage and ultimately might be the difference in this game. That foul on Turner is his third. Kid Gilchrist with a three-point play to open the second half. One guy does not stop Michael Kid Gilchrist from getting to the rim in half court or in transition. We've seen it all season long. Yep. In one swift play, 30 seconds into the second half, Kentucky's matched its biggest lead of the ball game, up four. Hamilton, double team, hook shot. This time it was a good one off the window, but it was still a little too strong. Terrence Jones clears the glass. Teague, little hesitation dribble, puts it high up for Davis, but Hamilton comes down with the ball. I'm not sure if that was a shot or a pass. That's a shot, and it's good. Austin Turner for three, his second three-pointer. And I like that look. I've talked about LSU grinding this ball game out, but when you can score off of your transition, you get a clean three, you jump up and stick it. Davis, we've not seen him take that mid-range jump shot that he's started to show us the last month of the season. Kentucky works it around the perimeter. Seven on the shot clock. Teague lobs, and it's picked off. By Storm Warren, who played the passing lane beautifully. Up and under is blocked, but and a foul called. Might be Kid Gilchrist, I think. That's his second. Right, Kentucky's half-court offense is just not good. It is just not good. The ball's getting stuck in Marcus Teague's hands. They're getting to the late clock situations more than they want to. And John Calipari right now has his work cut out for him in this ball game. His Andre defense. Stringer, excuse me, Jimmy, he's got four. Brad, his defense isn't able to turn LSU over and get points off of it. They're not scoring in transition. LSU's running to get their defense set. They've handled all of the roadblocks in their way, with the exception of Indiana. And it's a roadblock right now for them in New Orleans. It sure is. Stringer's giving LSU the lead back. The anticipation of what is a majority, <laughs> obviously proud, for Kentucky, all decked in blue. They went out, got their halftime soft drinks, whatever, and came back in and expected Kentucky to just start to be Kentucky and right now instead it's LSU maybe playing over their heads but playing beautifully Storm Warren lead goes to three for LSU John Calipari told Shannon we're getting sand kicked in our face in the first half and that's how they started off the second half LSU is playing harder the postseason passion right now is inside the purple jersey there's a good move Anthony Davis first field goal of the ball game comes two and a half minutes into the second half. His offense has really matured over the last month. Calipari's moving him around on the floor. He's made a couple threes the last two ball games, put him in dribble handoff action, but he's still at his best around that rim. Turner, nice drive. Just went right at the hip of Deron Lynn. And just one on one, man on man. And a whooping took place. Three minutes into the second half, LSU's got a three-point lead, about to be five. Stringer with a layup. I think Calipari takes a timeout. He's, he's going to light into somebody, or he's just going to ask them very simply, do you want to go back to Lexington or not? Because right now, we're playing like we want to go back to Lexington instead of looking like the team that wants the overall number one seed. The SEC tournament and maybe the national championship right now, they're down five. 1650 to play in this ball game Jimmy I would wager guess the last time somebody maybe had a five-point lead at this stage of a second half against Kentucky you and I did the Mississippi State game Bulldogs are up 13 at the break yes they might have still had a five-point cushion here but Kentucky's gonna have to start working for it now absolutely what does Kentucky do out of this timeout 
That was a check your pulse and where is our heart timeout speech by John Calipari. How does Kentucky respond? No separation for Kid Gilchrist to get it down the low block to Davis. He wants to get it to him, and Davis wants the ball, but nice job defensively by LSU. Right, Kentucky's going to have to make some threes in this game. Those purple jerseys are just surround sound on Anthony Davis that right now. That goes the three, and that's blocked by Hamilton. Now what few fans for LSU are in here, they're chanting air ball on Anthony Davis on his three-point attempt. That's not the guy they wanted taking the three, although he's hit a couple this year. Going to the deck, tie up, and possession arrow is going to go to Kentucky. A little bit of a stunned look on the Kentucky players as they walk into the front court past a broadcast position. Davis just kind of a blank stare. Michael Kidd Gilchrist. He had the big first half and started off with a three-point play to open the half to give Kentucky the lead, but now they're down still by five. Miller lobs to Jones. That might ignite things a little bit. See John Calipari talking to Marcus Teague on the bench. And that's what has to get corrected right now, Brad. You've heard me say it before. Great teams fix the problem right now, and Marcus Teague has to get engaged back in this ball game when he checks in on the floor. After the slam and the net getting hung up, we have our TV timeout with 15.41 to go, three-point game. Well, the Tigers fans up in one of the suites got the nice spread going, and they should have reason to celebrate. 35-32, they lead. SEC tournament presented by Haviland, part of championship week, presented by Dick Sporting Goods. And if you're just tuning in, don't adjust your set. Kentucky trails by three with 15 and a half to go. Pick and roll on a walk on Warren. That's only the fifth LSU turnover. They had only two, uh, rather three at halftime. Darius Miller should post up on this possession. He's being guarded by Hickey. Kentucky has their big lineup on the floor, and LSU still has two small guards. Kentucky's so good at finding the mismatch. And here it is. About a nine-inch difference right there between those two. Jones, baseline slam. Uh, it, it, it all started with a touch of Darius Miller. That's a bad match right now for a couple of minutes. And can LSU weather this big lineup that Kentucky has on the floor? How can they weather the crowd, too? It's the first time Kentucky fans have come to life since late in the first half. And now they're standing. Can Turner silence him? Off the mark. Kept alive by O'Brien, though. And he goes through Davis, and still Davis gets the rebound. Here, Davis fortunate he didn't get called for a foul because his arms are outside of his plane. Terrence Jones going hard to the rack, goes hard to the floor. And the foul's going to be on Storm Moore. Fred Johnson's way out by midcourt saying, I want a timeout right now. They get Darius Miller and Terrence Jones working a little two-man game. And as soon as Terrence Jones sprinted out of it, Darius Miller found him. And the power game of Kentucky trying to force their way through in this SEC tournament right now. LSU clinging to a one-point lead. Their coach was way out near the SEC logo at midcourt saying, let's stop this right now before the free throws and anything else and try to keep the crowd out of it. LSU had to beat Arkansas just to get here. Later on this afternoon, Alabama and Florida will get together. Florida had a first day by. So did Vanderbilt. So did Tennessee. And Tennessee and Ole Miss. Vandy and Georgia later on tonight. Semifinal Saturdays tomorrow on ABC at 1 and 3.30. We'll be here to bring you all of it all the way through the championship game on Sunday. That's where Kentucky plans on being, but they've still got a lot of work to do. See if Terrence Jones can tie the game for the seventh time. Not with that one. Right, Kentucky is one of five BCS teams ever to win their conference regular season by six game or more margin. Four out of those five teams went on to win the national championship. Right. Tie game. Full court pressure from the Cats. See if Hickey has any trouble with that. And they blows by Kid Gilchrist. They haven't been able to turn him over, have they, Brett? <laughs> he <goes> behind his <laughs> back at the free throw line. He is quick, and he's going to take the shot. Three came out. 
Davis another rebound. Anthony Davis getting close to double figures on the boards. Miller, three, big. Terrence Jones follows. He's got seven and a half, 11 in the game. Much like the 27 he had six weeks ago against LSU. In this ball game, Kentucky's better off playing with only Lamb or Teague on the floor because the size right now, LSU cannot handle. From the elbow, the jump shot short. Anthony Davis, another rebound. Jones, he's been dominant. He scored the last seven Kentucky points. Tips it after it was partially blocked by O'Brien. He almost got it in doing it that way. Ball's going to be out for the Tigers. That was a unique move right there. He went up. They got a piece of the shot, and then he just pushed it a second time. I think that was off LSU. That, that was, was off Hamilton, Hamilton, wasn't it? That's what the Kentucky fans are thinking, too. Hamilton, could he become part of the offense? Johnny O'Brien's had some big rebounds. Yeah, he, he has whipped Terrence Jones two or three times in this game. See if LSU can get a quality shot. And again, the fans thought it should be Kentucky ball. Antonio Petty says likewise. And the inbounds play will be in front of the scorer's table and the LSU bench. Stringer, a runner. Terrence Jones will pull out his ninth board. And Kentucky is so young, they've handled everything thrown at them this year for the most part. And this is their first time in the SEC tournament. Maybe it takes them a half. Foul. Second foul on Jones. It was a good thought. Big guy trying to get it to a bigger guy. But he flattened Hamilton in the process. Yep, absolutely the right call. Turner against Miller. Lost the ball. Kentucky needs to push this thing. John Calipari Perry employing his guys to run up the floor. He's seen enough of this late clock stuff and grind it out game. Uh, he just gave Darius Miller an earful. Darius is wishing he was on the other side of the court right now. Well, and John Calipari's wishing he'd post up. He's got Hickey guarding him at 5'10. Hamilton, nice job defensively against Davis. Miller loses it. Now the two little guys bringing it in a hurry. Stringer, he pulls it right back out. Kentucky by Darius Miller. Well, Darius Miller's going to come out. John Calipari didn't like what he did offensively. Kentucky's so good at taking advantage of size in the mismatch. And they couldn't do it with Miller. Miller didn't insert himself into the offense. And he will sit and have a little heart-to-heart -heart right now with John Calipari. I think John just told Rod Strickland, you talk to him. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a steal by Jones against Johnny O'Brien. One-on-one. And a foul on O'Brien, but he does prevent the basket. That's three on Johnny O'Brien. The bad news is Terrence Jones is not a great free throw shooter, but a nice job here to steal the inbound pass. Brad Ellis, she went to their safe out of bounds play, but it's not safe against Kentucky because of their link. Terrence right on that one in. He has scored the last eight Kentucky points. And Teague doesn't have a field goal. Davis has one field goal. Jones is doing the work for the Cats right now. Kentucky by four. That matches their biggest lead. See if LSU's got an answer. Hamilton on a pick and roll had an avenue there. They didn't get him the ball. Stringer up under Jones a rebound running with Lamb and Kid Gilchrist. Lamb from the elbow. And Johnny O'Brien is going to let it go out of bounds wisely. It'll be LSU ball after this time out. 11.43 remaining in the ball game. Kentucky has matched its biggest lead, but it's only four. And John Calipari is wanting more, more, more. Trent Johnson says, let's calm down and stay in it, fellas. 
guys can build some rebounds, that's for sure. Davis and Jones, each with 10. Kid Gilchrist with seven. This guy's fearless. 10 points for Anthony Hickey. Just goes straight to the rack. Kentucky's half-court defense has been so good in this ball game. A little surprised they come out and stretch their defense 94 feet. The same flex cut that they went to in the first half. They go right back to it. Kid Gilchrist has made that move look easy today. Might have gotten away shuffling his feet a little bit before he put it on the floor, but he's got 15. Brad, that play is easy to scout and hard to guard. Yeah. Always has been and always will be. LSU's running a similar version of it, but they have Stringer posting up inside, and that's <laughs> a lot different than Michael Kidd Gilchrist. Yeah, that's 5'8 instead of 6'7. Hamilton skips it down in low. Davis with another rebound off the miss by Warren. You see how far Anthony Davis came to get that rebound. He was at the 19-foot, 9-inch mark. And all of a sudden, bam, in two steps at the rim. He might not be doing anything offensively, but he's got 11 rebounds. Well, they can't cut down the nets, though, if he is not a double-figure scorer in March. Right. He has to get involved offensively in this tournament. And then when that bracket comes out on Sunday. Here's been the offense for Kentucky. Jones, Teague is bumped by Hickey. And Anthony picks up his first foul. Anthony Davis can run paint to paint in eight strides. And watch how quickly he gets from the three-point line, boom, to the rim. Just a great awareness, Brett. I've talked all season long about his position as a defender puts him in the premium spots as a shot blocker. And that is rare. He can guard a point guard. He can guard a five guy. And he does within the possession. They do not panic when he switches out. He gets it into Lamb on the baseline on the inbounds play. Ball is loose. Picked up by Stringer on the run. Going against Darius Miller. Followed by Bryant. It's going to be over the back. And that's four fouls on Johnny O'Brien. That was a great play by Darius Miller in transition defense. For a big kid like Miller to move his feet backwards at the same pace as a small point guard. Watch right here. Get him going. Get him going. Move those feet back. Stay off of the smaller player. Well done by Darius Miller. <laughs> Demonstrative John Calipari. I mentioned this morning the USA Today sports page. They always seem to get a picture of John with his mouth wide open. I know he yells a lot during the game, but it always makes him look like a monster. <laughs> He's not. <laughs> Davis on the baseline hook shot. Kentucky's biggest lead now, six. Oh my. If you're Kansas or North Carolina or Syracuse or Michigan State or Ohio State. And that young man starts dropping that shot. It is trouble. Well, LSU get a quality shot. They're in dire need of one. Now trailing by six. That's a good one. Storm Warren, the strength of the 6'7", 235 senior, has rattled that thing in. You know, they were able to drag Anthony Davis away from the rim just enough to allow that one-on-one -on -one down low against Jones. And that's a much better matchup. Davis pops out after that, the pick and pop, and he knocks it home. When you are the front runner for the National Player of the Year, you don't lay a goose egg on the big stage, and he's not going to do it. Whistle down low. Foul's going to be on Darius Miller. Brad, through the month of January, Anthony Davis was a layup, dunk, and tip-in score. But now he's doing this. He is stepping out, and that is a really good release coming off of that hand. Watch his extension in the wrist flip right there. That is just like John Jenkins as far as a release. He is not the shooter of John Jenkins, but the release is the same, and that shot right there is unguardable at the college level. It's a little sky hook going with that 18-foot jump shot and the shot blocking capabilities and the rebounding and the shot blocking capabilities and saving it on the baseline. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Teague on the run, lost it out of bounds. Wow. Cat quick. Not only the block of the shot as the second defender. Boom, go get it, and then bam, go get it again. There's only one guy in the college game that can make those kind of plays. And he's wearing 23 in white for Kentucky. He has awakened.
12 boards, three blocks, one shy of 150 for the year. And three field goals in this half. Brad, he already has the defensive player of the year, uh, the, the defensive play of the year when he blocked the shot of Henson. And he blocked a 14-foot jump shot from the longest guy in college ball. And I think ultimately when the Nets are cut down in New Orleans, he will make a play defensively that no one else in the college game can make. And that's why Kentucky will be your national champion. Outside the Mercedes-Benz Superdome where the Final Four will be held, there's the billboard. And yeah, they call it Fear the Brow. <laughs> and things of that nature. And there's his seven foot six inch wingspan. The uniblocker. Say the t-shirts. Three shots altered, three block shots. 12 points, or 12 rebounds, I should say, seven points. Kid Gilchrist is doing enough offensively to spread this thing out right now for Kentucky. He's got a chance for another three-point play. They go to the mismatch, whether it's in the half-court offense or off the out-of-bounds. You're going to let Michael Kid Gilchrist set the screen, but ultimately, he's going to get matched up on a smaller, inferior defender. Boy, Davis almost got that rebound off the missed free throw. Instead, we got a whistle and a foul. Kid Gilchrist, that's three on Michael. Kentucky has gained possession on 60% of his blocked shots. Freshman of the year, defensive player of the year, player of the year in the Southeastern Conference. And here in the SEC tournament, he's come to life to give his team an eight-point lead. He and Terrence Jones and Michael Kidd Gilchrist. There's been a lot of outside scoring for Kentucky. They're doing it with their front wall. And foul. This time on Deron Lamb. That's three on Lamb. So three on Lamb, three on Kid Gilchrist, three on Darius Miller. And we're in the one and one now. Deron Land stood up as a defender. And now he's going to get to sit down as a bench guy. <laughs> yeah. Not up for discussion. Nope. The discussion continues. It's a one-sided conversation. Turner, his first free throw of the day. Brad, most elite-level guys, and Kentucky has seven of them, they want to be stroked. And John Calipari in the recruiting process is eye-to-eye -eye honest and says, you're not going to get stroked by me. You're going to get told the truth. And as a result, we're going to win a lot of ball games. And I'm going to make you the best player you can. And that, that is rare now for guys like Teague and Jones and Davis and Kid Gilchrist on down the line to accept that and embrace that brutal honesty that Calipari throws at. Yep. A lot's been made of the fact that so many players are one and done at Kentucky. And John Keller says, hey, I'm, that's the rule. If you play one year, you can go to the NBA. I'm just trying to make your dreams come true. And in the process, win 30 or 35 or 36 or 38 games. Whistle and a foul. I heard earlier this year, somebody said anyone could coach Kentucky to 25 wins. Are you kidding me? Come on, man. Tennessee, Vanderbilt, and Georgia. Right now, we've got Kentucky in a cap fight between the Wildcats and the Tigers, 47-41. That last fall was on Ralston Turner, and he has fouled out with 10 points. More importantly, he's made two of the three three-pointers for LSU today, and I got a feeling they're going to need a couple here in the next eight minutes if they're going to win this game and pull off an upset. Kid Gilchrist at the free-throw line. But Brad, it's going to be hard now because now LSU has three small guards on the floor with Bass checking in as a six-footer. So right. now you've got 5'10", 5 5'11", 5 and six feet. The good part is that Anthony Hickey and Andre Stringer have not come off the floor. They have played <laughs> 64 combined minutes. They've only have two turnovers. So they're keeping LSU attached in this game right now by not turning it over. And remember, they played the entire game yesterday as well, just to get here. Stringer and Hickey, they're handling it out front right now for LSU. But boy, if the Tigers ever needed a quality shot and a score, it's right here. And it's a walk instead for Johnny O'Brien. That's what they definitely didn't need. I'm going to remind all you golfers and club pros, online registration is now for the 2012 ESPN National Golf Challenge. Log on to ESPNGolf.com to sign up and find a participating course near you. Jimmy and I have no time for golf right now. It's basketball. A lot of it. All the way through Sunday's championship here in New Orleans. Turnover, Kentucky. A terrible post feed by Terrence Jones. Oh. 
Where's the scoring going to come from? Pick and roll. Stringer got it underneath and a nice dish to Storm Warren. Right, Kentucky has two options right now to go to. Kid Gilchrist has a 5'11 guy on him, and Darius Miller has a 5'9 guy on him. And either one of those guys are your post-up options right now. Right now, Kid Gilchrist is 40 feet away from the hoop. Miller around a screen, stolen away. Hickey ahead to Stringer. And those two little guys just keep continuing to be a thorn in the Wildcats' side. Absolutely. They have played every minute today and yesterday, like you said. And their courage and their competitive fire and their hot hands defensively, Kentucky, has just been careless with the basketball. That's a simple dribble handoff play that Kentucky is allowing LSU to get in between, and that should not happen. 11 steals, Jimmy, and 14 fast break points for the Tigers. Well, that's why you don't play around with the basketball on the perimeter with those two small guards defensively. You, you move their rear ends to that low block and make Hickey and Stringer play post defense. I expect Kentucky to do it out of this timeout. LSU, one of their leading scorers sitting, though, Austin Turner. This guy still very much involved. Anthony Hickey, the freshman, and Andre Stringer, the sophomore, who combined on that last fast break after the steal to cut the game down to four again. Alaperi takes Darius Miller out, so now Kentucky playing with two guards. And Teague and Deron Lamb, they don't post up. Drop step to the baseline, Davis. Three-point opportunity coming up, and Johnny O'Brien is gone. Now two LSU starters have fouled out. The combination of length and quickness of Anthony Davis is what you're up against. And watch him drop, boom, see him drop his hips. Terrence Jones did it the first half on a drive and watch him drop his hips. Bam, right there. When he gets lower than O'Brien, game over. He's like a limousine that wants to be a sports car. <laughs> Three-point play, double-double <laughs> for him, and it's 52-45. He will be able to buy both <laughs> in a short yes. period of time. Absolutely. Bass in traffic, got it to Warren. Warren got his own miss. He's one guy that's hung in there today. He's a senior. He knows how physical it can be underneath, and he's not intimidated by Jones and Davis. He just keeps banging in there. He's got 12 points, and he keeps it to a five-point game. There's a much tighter dribble handoff between Davis and Kid Gilchrist. Terrence Jones dribbling 25 feet from the hoop. This is not, not quite what they want to happen either. That's how they were in the first half. Late clock. Teague has the ball. They're stuck. Lamb's got to hurry. Up off the window. Right before the shot clock expired, Deron Lamb hits his first field goal of the second half. A violent cut by Deron Lamb. Oh, I guess. In late clock with seven on it. He knew he had to go get himself open. And he cut with a purpose now. Five minutes to play. Kentucky by seven. Warren again. This time got his own miss and doesn't score. Terrence Jones snatches it down, and he's going to try to lead the fast break, and he's fouled by Bass. What's Deron Lamb, Brad, on the last possession? This shot clock was down in single digits, and he's going to work off of here. Watch the speed. Bam. I mean, he knows I've got to get it, and then once I do, I've got to get to the rim, at least get an offensive rebound opportunity. That's a really hard cut. And Deron Lamb, I still think the strength of his game is that mid-range game. I know he's an unbelievable three-point shooter, but he is outstanding at 15-foot and in stuff. Garrett Jones has hit four straight free throws now after missing his first three. And it's an eight-point game matching the biggest advantage for Kentucky. This guy, there's only been one run in this game. And I don't mean by a team, I mean by one guy. Nine straight points. Hits both free throws. That's the only run of the day by either team. And now Terrence Jones 
has given Kentucky its biggest margin. Like Terrence Jones heard you talking about him as he looked over here, a little smile on his face. I mean, if he is Kentucky's best or second best player in March, they are at their best. How about Andre Stringer going over Anthony Davis? He had to put that one about 13 feet in the air to get it to come down through the net, 56-49. You really can't get any more out of two 5'9 guards than Trent Johnson has gotten out of those two kids today. You got that right, partner. They have played their hearts out. Both days. And after getting steamrolled on their home floor six weeks ago, they have really hung in here in New Orleans. Davis. And he's fouled by Hamilton, and Hamilton will help him up. Davis is going to have to earn it from the free throw line. After we come back, just under four minutes to play, Kentucky by seven. Today's SEC Network game has been brought to you by Haviland with Deposit Shield. Protect what matters. The 2012 ESPN National Golf Challenge. Go to ESPNGolf.com to sign up today. And by Buffalo Wild Wings. Wings, beer, sports. Second half, he's going to work on offense, Jimmy. Well, this is a guy that only takes eight shots a game, Brad, but now he has made 26 of his last 34 attempts that he's taken, taking high percentage looks. When he gets that jump hook going, it is special, and that is a defensive play that I think he's the only guy in the college game that can make. That might be my favorite play of the day so far. There's been a lot of good ones. He's going back to the free throw line here. He's got another double-double. 10 points, 12 rebounds. Knocks down that one. He's got a good looking shot, whether it's from the outside or from the free throw line. Hit them both. It's again a nine point lead. Brad, you watch John Jenkins shoot tonight at the end of his shot where his wrist is. And then get a frozen picture of where Anthony Davis' wrist is. Identical. Stringer, high jump shot, rimmed out. Warren again stays there and makes the play. Storm Warren has played very, very well in what might be his final game of his career. Early, we talked about LSU. Get this ball game down to under four minutes and still be in it. And they are. Davis, low block against Hamilton. Goes baseline, switches hands. Warren pulls down the miss. And now Hickey on the run. Stringer all the way inside, blocked by Davis and pulled down by Davis. Davis misses the shot, 94 feet away from the other rim. And in about seven or eight strides, he's there to block the shot. His 150th of the year. He wants the ball back, too. Not a great entry pass to him. He'll kick it back outside. Terrence Jones going to take a three. Not sure about that one. Ludwig with a rebound. Warren, he's been the guy scoring. Hamilton trying to get the rebound, but Kid Gilchrist says, uh-uh. Good girl, Chris, with eight rebounds. Terrence Jones with 11. Anthony Davis with 13. Hey, what Trent Johnson has coached his tail off in this ball game. Two little guys have been on the floor the entire time, not turning it over. And he's gotten his shots from inside that three-point line. Two minutes remaining. Kentucky by seven. They were up by one at halftime. Lamb off the handle, going to the basket. It's out of bounds to the Tigers. And a timeout taken by LSU. Three possession game. 58-51 with 156. Remaining in the ball game. The winner of this one will go on to semifinal game one tomorrow on ABC against the winner of Florida and Alabama. Tonight, 
Tennessee and Ole Miss get together. Vanderbilt and Georgia is the nightcap. Jimmy, I have a feeling that the uh, second game we've got coming up this afternoon is going to be a very, very tough one. Alabama has trouble scoring, but they defend beautifully against the three-point shot, and that's what Florida lives off. And Florida has not shot the ball well from the three-point line no. in the last three or four ball games at below 30%. And this is a Florida ball club, Brad. If they're going to go deep in March, they have to make 10 or 11 three-point shots a game. Where's Florida going to be defensively? Because will you get is gone for the season. Right. Their best defender, you and I know that. And what are they going to look like defensively now going forward? Both those clubs are safely in the NCAA tournament. But you want to get hot again right now if you're Alabama or Florida heading into the uh, the big dance. Well, Kentucky trying to hold on to a lead here. Dari and Barry and Joe were talking to the pregame show about maybe putting a little bit of doubt in this young Kentucky ball club's mind if they had an off par performance today. That's kind of what they have right now. Hamilton over Davis. A three-point shot. There's Hamilton now one for 11 or 12 in this ball game. Anthony Davis, as you said, got in his head early and it has continued. A minute 20 to go. Hickey almost came up with a ball. Wow, great hustle. This kid has really played his heart out today. He's caused Teague all kinds of problems. And that was the question mark the last couple of months. Will Marcus Teague be good enough for Kentucky to win a national championship the way he has played today? The answer is no. But he has been very good in January and February, and he's got to get his mojo back. And then Lamb almost lost it to Stringer. The little guy's... Given Kentucky's guards fits, but Stringer does foul Lamb and send the second best free throw shooter in the conference to the line. I think Marcus Teague has been bothered by the foot speed and the hand speed and the toughness of those two small LSU guards. They have climbed up into his jersey from the opening tip. And he has not made the adjustment and owned his spot and been the aggressor right back at him. With the exception of Deron Lamb, Kentucky's gotten virtually no offense from their backcourt. As Lamb rips the free throw, it gives him 12. But other than that, Darius Miller and Marcus T, not much. He was assists in there, that's it. But this guy, one of the best shooters in the conference. Taking his time from the stripe. And that one came out. Boy, he almost never misses free throws. Eight-point game with a minute to go. I, I go to Storm Warren. Hickey back pedals. There's Warren, but he gets it right back to Hickey. And Hickey tried to get it back to Warren because the ball was tipped. Now Stringer picks up the loose ball. Through traffic, swatted down by Davis. His fifth block shot. And now Kentucky knows that 30 seconds from now, they're going to advance. Marcus Teague is getting ready to check out of this ball game, Brad. He, he is just not engaged at all. Again, Anthony Davis, if he's around the rim, just forget about it. It doesn't matter if you're 5'9 or 6'9. He's not going to allow that play to, to take place. Last loose ball with the ball was thrown out towards half court. Marcus T just looked at it instead of went instead of running it down. A timeout in between free throws as the lead goes back to nine. But this has been a struggle for the number one team in the country all day long. And watch this. Good challenge by Teague, and then the ball's loose. And he gets thrown out in front of Marcus Teague, and look at this effort, or lack of. Are you kidding me? And John Calipari lit him up on that play. And then Anthony Davis saved the day on the other end as he's done through 32 games this year. Number one shot blocker in the country, showing us why here again today. He's got five blocks. 13 rebounds and 12 points. 
Fatigue's got one more from the free throw line. And time is running out on the Tigers' upset bid. I think John Calipari is going to be the first to say LSU played harder in this ball game yep. for 40 minutes. Kentucky had their spurts, but the effort goes to LSU. So Teague with one, one more free throw. Kentucky won't even put anybody on the uh, lane. And Teague missed that as well. But still 30 seconds to go. Three possession game for LSU. So hard to get off good threes against Kentucky because of their length. That's the last shot I would have taken. Yeah. Another block shot by the Defensive Player of the Year in the conference, the Player of the Year in the conference, the Freshman of the Year in the conference. The number one team in the conference survives to win their 23rd straight game. They go to 31-1, and one, but boy, did they have to earn it against LSU. And already, even though the clock hasn't expired, the coach is out there talking it over. Great performance by LSU to really push the number one team in the country. Push they did, but when push came to shove, it was Anthony Davis and Terrence Jones and Michael Kidd Gilchrist that were too much for the Tigers. So put Kentucky into semifinals Saturday. And they'll wait the winner of our second game, be it Florida or Alabama, 1 o'clock tomorrow on ABC. Don't forget, Florida and Alabama is next. Tonight, Tennessee and Ole Miss and Vandy and Georgia will get together. 60-51, Kentucky a winner. Don't forget, Championship Week continues coming up. The principal financial SEC tournament today. In about 25 minutes, we'll have our second game of the afternoon for you. Shannon checks in with John Calipari. Well, Coach, we've heard you say several times this season that when teams play you, it is their Super Bowl. LSU played you tough today. What did you learn well, about your team? First of all, they played great basketball. We weren't ready for that physicalness to start that game. It's not that we didn't guard them. We couldn't make a basket because the game got too physical. How did we get nine turnovers at half? Just physical play. Um, even down the stretch, I had to take some guys out. The game got too physical for them. We learned. But it was a good win. It was a grind-out kind of game, and we needed it. So what adjustments do you make for tomorrow's game? We're going to get some rest. And I think they've learned that they're going to have to play more physical. We're going to have some issues. Thanks, Coach. Kentucky 31-1. They win game one of their SEC tournament to advance to the semifinals. In about 25 minutes, we're going to have the second game of our day, Florida and Alabama. After the break, Dari, Barry, and Joe will have the SEC tournament today presented by the principal financial group. Stick around. A lot more hoops coming up from New Orleans.